Uh, in this video, I want to demonstrate bridging MQTT protocol and OPC UA protocol. Uh, this is something that I've been wanting to do for a while, um, especially since, you know, coming from a manufacturing background, we have a lot of machinery that does speak OPC. But, you know, how do you, how do you get to talk to MQTT and other protocols? So what I set up, I was going to do a demo on an Arduino, but I ran into some technical issues. So we'll just deal with a MQTT client. Uh, what I have running here is ActiveMQ. Right, nothing connected. And let's um, use this MQTT spy to connect to it. Okay, we're gonna subscribe to all the topics for this example. So we can see the messages coming in. And uh, let's go through a little bit of what I had to do right now to set up uh, the OPC UA end. So we're running Kepler server. And what I did is I created a channel. That is a memory based channel. Inside of here. I added a device and called it Arduino One with a couple of tags of counter and reset. The original demo was going to demonstrate uh, the Arduino updating the counter through MQTT all the way to OPC UA. And then what I was going to demonstrate is actually in OPC UA uh, setting the flag on the reset tag and having that go to the Arduino side. Um, right now I'm just dealing with strings. I haven't really dove into the different typing and complex types of OPC UA. So let's, uh, let's open up a quick client on here and see what these values actually are at the moment. All right, so they're both set to zero. Um, let me start up the 4.9 bridge which has a couple connections defined here. Uh, the default OPC, user, U, OPC UA server we're going to be using and the root channel. So what is going to happen is uh, the bridge is going to subscribe to all the devices and all their tags and it's only a single, single level deep right now on the 4.9 channel. So any changes to the values on the OPC UA side are going to be brought back and dispatched to all the other protocols and in this case MQTT. On the MQTT side we're going to subscribe to all the topics and we're going to try to dispatch those messages to OPC UA. Uh, if there are no matching OPC UA nodes found, then we're just going to drop that message. All right, so let's start this up. Okay. And right away we should see some activity. So on our client here, there's a bunch of stuff. And here, Arduino One counter came through and Arduino One Reset came through to the MQTT side. And this happened because when I create a subscription to the OPC UA topics or tags, uh, they, as soon as I create the subscription, the initial value comes through. So what we can do here is let's um, increment the counter. Arduino One counter. Uh, let's say it's a 1,000 now. So we're going to publish that out. Now let's see what that looks like in here. So you can see that on the OPC UA side, the counter did change to 1000. And also what we saw happen is that our subscription for Arduino One counter on the MQTT side was also updated. And that's because we published a message from MQTT and it was dispatched through the br bridge to the OPC server and the OPC server actually triggered a um, 
the monitored item to be picked up again and sent back to uh, MQTT. So uh, th there might be some issues of messages looping back and forth. I'm not sure how to handle that yet. And then the idea was to have um, to be able to set this tag to one and have the Arduino pick it up which it did here and um, be able to reset the counter again back to zero which would then keep incrementing over time All right so we're, we sent it we sent a zero to it we see it that it's zero <clears throat> so that's cool right we have kind of a two-way communication going on um, where this is going to come in handy for me especially we started looking at uh, inductive automations ignition designer which is a, uh, a real cool remote HMI designer right so I, I set up a little screen here and let's say we want to tag this we want to attach this to um, our tag that we found so see the reason why it's important for me to be able to use ignition designer is because it only communicates with OPC or databases right it doesn't communicate natively with MQTT so if you look at my Kepler server and my 49 channel I can pull in those tags so let me just pull in this whole tree here over here somewhere So I have this uh, readout here on the screen and now I want to attach the tag to the text value. So I pick 49 Arduino 1 counter tag and then when I send a message from MQTT side to let's say 8888 that value is going to go over to an LPC server and it's going to make its way into the ignition software HMI because we're bound and connected to the Kepler server, you know, and I was going to do something like a um, a button. I drop a button, and on um, on the action on the click, I was going to set a tag value of my 49 Arduino reset to one. Oops, to one. So then. We can see that the value um, is currently one, so let's change that to negative one, right? And what we're going to do is, from our little application, we're going to write the OPC tag to one. I have to change the gateway to read and write. We're going to change the OPC tag, reset tag, to one, and we should see that it actually is one now both here and in Kepler quick client the value is one again so thanks for watching um, I'm not sure where I'm gonna go with this but uh, be interesting to see what happens thanks